Hello everyone, we are back with another RenPy tutorial today. This one is probably going to be a relatively quick one, but um, I think every time I say that it ends up being half an hour long, but this one should be a little, a little bit faster. Um, first of all, uh, I want to apologize for the noise that you might hear in the background. I normally record these a little bit earlier in the day, but my neighbor's kids are home from school and one of them is riding a dirt bike up and down the street right in front of my house, so I apologize if you hear a uh, dirt bike engine running back and forth. Sorry about that, it's living in the... Uh, suburbs in the south for you. All right, uh, but today uh, we got something really cool that I wanna do, and this is going to kind of set the basis for some tutorials that I'm going to do in the near future. Uh, but today we're gonna start laying the groundwork for something called screen language. Um, I did a couple of screen language tutorials a long time ago, but they are definitely in dire need of an update. Um, so I'm going to start doing a deep dive into screen language, um, starting with just the absolute very basics of kind of what that is and what it means. So if you're unfamiliar with screen language, basically everything that you see in RenPy is a screen. Um, and they have a sort of an internal language that's just used in RenPy that determines how and when and what that screen displays and how you interact with it. Um, so again, everything that you see in the game from the main menu to the load and save menus to the uh, even the dialogue boxes that appear on, on the screen, all of that is a screen. And um, you, uh, we can make a game just by overlaying screens on top of each other. For instance, the background is a screen. The characters on top of it is, is a screen. Then we layer the uh, dialogue box on top of that, which is another screen. And all of these screens just kind of come together to make your game. And I'm gonna start showing you how to create screens uh, from scratch, and that's gonna allow us to do some really, really cool stuff in the future. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna show you how to declare a basic screen. Um, you can do this uh, pretty much anywhere. Um, you don't have to do it inside like your actual game script. I am in the script.rpy file, but I'm going to uh, create the screen outside of the start script. So it's not gonna be like part of the game script. It's gonna be where I define my characters and images and whatnot. Um, also, before we get into that, there actually is a script called screens.rpy. And if I'm doing a game that uses a lot of screens, I will usually either put my screens in that file or I will uh, sometimes create a different uh, screens.rpy file that might be like custom screens.rpy that just has the screens that I've created so I can keep things organized. But you can actually go into screens.rpy and you can um, tweak, customize, or completely change any screen in the game. Like if you just scroll down a little bit, you've got a section for in-game screens and you have the say screen. And this one's responsible for displaying dialogue on the screen. And you can change anything that you want to about it. Um, if you've never done screen language before, a lot of this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense right now, but we'll come back to it after I explain a couple of the concepts, and things will make a little bit more sense. Again, we're only going to do the basics of screen language, but you'll at least be able to tell a little bit of what's going on with some of these screens, probably enough to go ahead and start tweaking things and, and changing it up a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is declare a screen, which is super easy. We just use the keyword screen. And then we're going to put in the name of the screen as a function. And I'm just going to call this new main menu. Um, I'm not calling it main menu because that one is already taken by the main menu. Um, and after that, we're going to put a set of empty parentheses and a colon because this is technically a function. We're declaring a Python function when we do this, and then we're going to call it as a function. So if you remember, a Python function is just a snippet of code that you can call over and over again. You could write once and use it as many times as you want. Screens are kind of the same way. You create the screen once, and then you can use it wherever you want in your code just by putting in like one line. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna put some simple text on the screen. So inside this screen function, um, you can use any number of different uh, keywords in order to put different elements. And right now I just wanted to play, display some text on the screen. Um, so I'm just going to use a text box and you do that just with the keyword text. And then we're gonna put in the text that we want to appear. So we're just gonna call it main menu. And then you have the option of putting in um, different styles or positioning attributes. So after that, I'm gonna tell it that I want to align it and we're gonna align 0.5 and 0 0.5. So the way the coordinates on the screen work is that um, 0, 0 is at the top left of your screen, and as you go down, the number increases to 1 at the bottom, 
and one at the right. So the top left of your screen is zero, zero, and the bottom right of your screen is one, one. So if we put 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that should put our text right in the middle of the screen. Um, and we'll test that in a moment. I'm going to go down into my start label, which is completely empty. I've got nothing in my, my game script. Um, so we're just going to call the uh, screen that we just created by using the keyword call screen. It is literally that simple. And we're just going to put a new main menu. And we don't uh, want to put the parentheses on that. We only have to do that when we declare it. But this, we're just going to put a call screen, new main menu. And let us go into our game and we'll see what that looks like. Spoiler, spoiler alert, it's just going to say main menu in the middle of the screen. <laughs> there we go, main menu right in the middle. Uh, and that's it. So um, really, really simple screen so far. But we are going to add a little bit to that. So I want to actually make that screen do something. Because right now, we call the screen and then the game dies. Like there is nothing to do after that. You can't even get off the screen and go to the return statement because we haven't programmed a way to interact with, uh, with that screen yet. So we're going to give it a couple of different buttons that we can interact with. And I'm going to show you how to duplicate some of the functionality of the main menu. Um, so first thing that we can do, if we want, is we can add a background. So I didn't add a background on that one, so it just went to the default black uh, background. But if you want to add a background, you just use add and then just put in the name of your file from your image folder. I'm using my, my go to bgbar.png. Um, and then after that, we're going to create a couple of different elements. So before I just use a text element, but now I want to put kind of a container where I can have everything kind of grouped together. And one of the most uh, common containers is called a vertical box or a V box. So we're going to put in V box and that's going to have its own coding block that tells you everything that's in it. Um, by the way, you might have to manually tab over. I don't know if you noticed me do that, but for some reason in, um, in my uh, Visual Studio code, it doesn't automatically tab over all the time when I'm doing some of the RimPy stuff. So just be sure that you do tab over for this block. Um, so in this one, um, I'm going to do X align and Y align separately just to show you how you can do that. You could do these together like we did in the uh, last example. But I'm going to say X align 0 0.5 and Y align. I can spell 0 0.5. So this basically did what the last one did. We're aligning it um, 0 0.5 along the X or the horizontal axis and then 0 0.5 halfway along the vertical um, or Y axis. So again, it's going to put this empty box right in the middle of the screen and we're still in this coding block. So anything else that we put down here is going to put it inside of that box. So everything will be, again, just kind of aligned in the middle of the screen together inside this box that we're creating. And we're going to create three text buttons. And a text button is what it sounds like. It is a piece of text that also acts as a button. You can click it and it does something. And the way that we're going to do that, again, is super simple. We're going to use the keyword text button. That is it. So you put in text button. You put in what you want your text to be. So I'm going to say start to start the game. And then we're going to put in the keyword action, which is going to be the action that it completes. And RenPy has a bunch of built-in actions. You can also do custom actions. Again, we're going to get into more of these in a future tutorial. But for right now, we're just going to use a built-in action called start. And start is, now in this one, we're actually calling a function. So we do have to put the empty parentheses after that. Um, we're going to do another text button. This one is going to be load. And for this action, we're going to show the loading screen. And so for this one, we can't just put in load like we did before because it's going to try to load a game. But instead, we have to show the load menu. So we're going to use a different function called show menu. And then we're going to put load in parentheses. So that is going to bring up the load menu. Um, and that one, actually, if I highlight over it, it tells you where the load screen is. So just by curiosity, I'm going to go to line 593. We'll see if I can find that. I didn't even do this when I was putting this together, but if I go to 593, there we go. It shows us what the load screen is. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Didn't even know that it did that. All right. So next we're going to do one more text button. And this one is going to be quit. So it'll allow us to quit the game. And just like start, that one's just a simple function. And that's all we have to do. So again, we've got our V box that's going to be in the middle of the screen, X align and Y align in the middle of the screen. And then we're going to do our three text buttons, start, load, and quit. And let's pull that up. So again, go to start the game. Now we've got our, yeah, we've got our BG bar. 
and then start loading quit. So if I hit load, it's going to go to our loading screen. Then I can return. If I go to quit, it's going to ask me if I want to quit, just as if we you know, hit the quit button. Um, if I go to start, something weird is going to happen. The game is going to crash because we have already started the game. You can't start a game twice, so that button will not be functional for us right now. Um, but I just wanted to kind of throw it in there just to, just to show you that you could put in, that in there. So another way of creating a menu without using a VBox is to use a grid. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. We're going to leave, actually I'm going to get rid of our BG because that was kind of, kind of getting in the way a little bit. So get rid of the background so we can see things a little bit better. And now instead of the VBox, I'm going to create a grid with the keyword, you might have guessed, grid. And after this, we're going to put two numbers that's going to be the dimensions of our grid. So we're going to do a two by two grid. So it's going to be uh, four items, two on the top, two on the bottom. And there we have to manually tab over. And we're going to do our alignment just like before. I'm going to go back to the um, other way of doing alignment, though, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 in parentheses. And so I said we're going to have four items, but I've only got three uh, down here. So we're going to go ahead and squeeze in another one. We're going to do another text button. And this one, let's do the settings menu. So for action, again, we're going to say show menu. And this is going to be preferences is the name of the settings menu. So now when I go into that, um, again, it's going to put a two by two grid with each of these four uh, buttons in there. There we go. And just like before, um, I can do load, I can do quit, and if I go to settings, it's going to bring up the preferences uh, menu, just as if I were calling these from the main menu. And quit. There we go. And I will show you one more thing that you can do with this real quick, how you can kind of dynamically change the menu by doing different things. Um, so let's do this. Uh, let me go ahead and do I want to get rid of all that? I'm going to leave load and quit. So I'm going to get rid of start and preferences. And I'm going to go back to the box. Only because this is how I did this in my notes. I just want to make sure this works. <laughs> X align 0 0.5. Y align 0 0.5. There we go. And so this one, I'm going to put a conditional in the top just to show you how you can use um, conditionals in this. And I'm going to say... Uh, I'm just going to call it show message. So I'm going to create a default variable, show message, and I'm going to say that's equal to true. And so then inside my screen, I'm going to say if show message. So if that is true, then it's going to show an additional text that says welcome back. So let's say that we're just welcoming back our returning player. And we're going to put that at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Three. So halfway on the y-axis, but only about, or on the x-axis, but only about a third of the way down the screen on the y-axis. It's going to be a little bit higher. Um, and then, and it's only going to show that if that variable is true, which it's true by default. And I'm going to create another uh, text button that's going to reset the variable. Again, just to show you a different action that you can do on this. So this is totally pointless right now, but again, this, there are some different, more uh, useful things you can do with this. Uh, so I'm going to say set variable, show message, and we're going to change that to false. So I'm putting that in brackets. So we're kind of stacking uh, different things inside here. And then I'm going to use a function called set variable, which is going to change the show message variable to false. And so when I do that, it should make that message uh, disappear from the screen. So let's give that a try. There we go. So I've got my welcome back message. Um, still got load and quit that work as normal. And then if I hit reset variable, then it gets rid of our variable at the top of the screen. And that button is no longer active, which is okay. So again, just a very, very brief introduction to screen language. I'm going to go back to my screens.rpy file now and show you um, a couple of the different screens now that might make a little bit more sense. Like if I go to here to the about screen, let me pull up the about screen real quick so we can see what that looks like. Most people don't visit this one very much. But this one has the name of the game, the version of the game, the version of RemPy that it's made with, 
and so on and so forth, just some extra information. If you're making your game, it's really good to put, you know, extra information in here about yourself and about the game that can go there, especially any licensing or anything like that. So in the actual about screen, it declares that just like we did our screen, screen about with the empty parentheses, a colon, and then a big coding block. Um, it uses the tag menu, and it does this so that it knows to only display one menu at a time. Otherwise, it'll try to stack the screens on top of each other. But since they're tagged, it'll automatically close one when it opens another one, um, which, uh, yeah, just causes, uh, it might cause strange behavior if you try to open multiple, uh, multiple menus at one time. Um, let me see. So some of this stuff we didn't really cover. Like I said, I'm going to get into it in a future tutorial. Most of it has to do with styles, um, which is just the style like fonts and things like that uh, on the screen. But here you see we have a V box. Um, we have a label with the config name. That's the name of the of the game internally in, in RenPy. Um, it's got the version of the game, which all these things are uh, variables that you can change. I think they reside in uh, options.rpy if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then it's got the about section. So you can go in here and, you know, change any of this stuff and have that appear on your about screen or customize it in any way that you like. Uh, what else do we have? Let me go up a little bit. There we go. There's the game menu screen, um, which is, I think this is the, like the quick menu that shows at the bottom of the screen, I believe. Let me see. No, I think that one's a little bit higher. That one's up in like the 200s. That's the one I was specifically looking at. Here we go, the navigation screen. That's what I was looking for. So this one, um, if you notice, whenever you play a uh, RenPy game, unless somebody specifically disabled it or changed it, you have this uh, kind of a quick menu down at the bottom, and that is in itself a screen that it just overlays um, over every, basically every screen that you, uh, every screen that you visit. And this is the navigation screen. It's the screen that makes that whole thing work. Um, so this one says, if main menu, it'll give you a start button. So it'll only show the start button if you're at the main menu, because otherwise you're in the game. And as we saw before, it'll cause a crash if you try to start a game when you've already got a game started. Um, but then it's got these other text buttons for history, save, load, preferences, and all of that stuff. Some of them are conditional, kind of like we did before, um, where it only works in certain circumstances uh, where it makes sense to work. So again, go through the screens.rpy and just uh, kind of tweak things if you want. Um, figure out what everything does. Uh, start a new project that you you know don't really care about. If you absolutely break something, you can just delete it and then and then start a new one. I love to do that to to try out new ideas. Um, but again, in uh, the future tutorials, I'm going to show you some different ways that you can use these. I like to do um, kind of like hidden object games, uh, kind of mini games inside my game, which are super easy to do. Um, so I'll, I'll probably cover those in the uh, next tutorial and show you some cool things you can do with these. Uh, but in the meantime, if there's anything specific that you want to see from uh, screen language or anything you want to see if screens can do, leave me a comment below. Uh, I've gotten to a couple of, um, uh, of uh, user questions recently. Um, so again, if you have any specific questions, I will definitely see what I can do about that and try to get to those as soon as possible. In the meantime, if you got something out of this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss one of my new videos and we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.